हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डिस्पर्जन मॉडिफाइड सिंगल मोड फाइबर्स सो हाउ वी आर मॉडिफाइंग द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द डिस्पर्जन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक इन दिस वीडियो आई होप यू ऑल हैव वॉच ऑल ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इन दिस प्ले लिस्ट बिकॉज दीज वीडियोज आर रिलेटेड If you don't know what is dispersion, you have to watch all of the previous videos related to the dispersion and a lot of things I am taking from the previous videos also. So to understand this, it is highly recommended that you go back, watch all of the previous videos first, and then come to this video. So let's start our discussion. So we are going to talk about the dispersion modified single mode fibers. How we are going to modify the characteristics? either we can shift the zero material dispersion point or which is called the dispersion shifted single mode fibers we are shifting the characteristics of the dispersion to shift the zmd point right so this is the first type of dispersion modified single mode fiber that is the dispersion shifted single mode fiber which is called the dsf the second type is the dff the dispersion flattened single mode fiber we are going to flatten out the graph of the dispersion how we are going to do that what is the advantage of that we are going to see in this video so when we flatten out the dispersion curve losses are reduced the dispersion effect is reduced and we are going to see this so let's start our discussion so here you can see the dispersion characteristics which are varying with respect to lambda so here on the x axis we have the wavelength and here on the y axis we have the dispersion i told you the graph of the dispersion with respect to the wavelength so the graph was looking something like this right so here i was having the material dispersion this was the material dispersion this was the waveguide dispersion right so we had the total dispersion also this was the total dispersion now what i have done how i have made this graph so this is just this graph and i have just considered the total dispersion the material dispersion and the waveguide dispersion so you can see after a point so i have not considered this part so this part is not considered and if i see just this part this part is drawn here and plus i have considered some more terms over here as well so if you remember the previous class i told you the total dispersion is given as the waveguide dispersion plus the material dispersion and plus the profile dispersion so here i was neglecting dp so i was considering only the waveguide and the material dispersion and there i told you in the single mode fibers the material dispersion was dominating so i am not considering this i have only the material and the waveguide dispersion so you can see over here the material dispersion is increasing but you can see the waveguide dispersion is decreasing and now the material dispersion when it is crossing the zero point it is called the zero material dispersion at this point or at this wavelength at this particular wavelength i will not be having any kind of dispersion so the lambda over which i will be getting the zero material dispersion is the zmd point right so here if i consider the material dispersion as well as waveguide dispersion the material dispersion is increasing the waveguide dispersion is decreasing so when i consider the effect of both of them i will be getting the total dispersion so this is my total dispersion that i have right so the total dispersion is having the zmd point over here so this is not exactly the zmd point this is the zero dispersion point for the total dispersion so at this point i will be getting the zero dispersion right so i hope you understood this diagram very well and now i hope you understood there is a trade off between the waveguide dispersion and the material dispersion so the major trade off occurs in the process between the material and the waveguide dispersion so one is increasing and one is decreasing 
you can see the material dispersion is increasing and it is represented with the positive sign. The waveguide dispersion is decreasing and it is represented with the negative sign. So you can see the total dispersion would be dm plus dw only here. I have considered this formula. So dt would be equal to lambda upon cd square n1 upon d lambda square that is the material dispersion minus n1 minus n2 upon lambda c v d square vb upon dv square where v is the normalized frequency. Right, so this is how I can find out the waveguide dispersion and the material dispersion and the total dispersion would be this, right? So at a particular frequency, because here you can see this is also a function of refractive index of the core N1 and this is also a function of the refractive index of the core. You can see N1 over here, you can see N1 over here. If I change the lambda at a particular lambda, I will be having total dispersion would be zero at this point. I will be having the total dispersion to be zero at wavelength longer than the Z MD point DT the total dispersion can be zero so okay you can see this graph is shifted in the right side so the ZMD point is shifted over here right because this material dispersion the waveguide dispersion is added and this point is shifted over here so at this point I am getting the zero dispersion and DT can be zero at the shifted point so there is a very good example of the silicate glass fiber which is having the low losses and the low dispersion at the one point 0.55 micrometer wavelength right so when I operate it at 1.55 micrometer wavelength mostly we are working with it right so when I'm working with it I have to work on 1.55 micrometer wavelength we will be getting low loss and low dispersion but when I talked about the material dispersion the zero material dispersion point I told you it was lesser than 1.55 so I have shifted the zero dispersion point right so I can do the further modifications what modifications I can do inside the optical fiber I can decrease the fiber core diameter I can reduce reduce the core size or I can reduce the radius of the core. First modification is related to the diameter of the core. I have to reduce the diameter of the core and second I have to increase the delta which is the relative refractive index. So if I do these two transformation I would be getting the dis dispersion shifted single mode fiber or which is called the DSFs. Okay, so this is dispersion shifted single mode fiber which I am getting by reducing the diameter or by increasing the delta. So I hope you understood this. So how I am getting the dispersion shifted fiber. So this was my DT. If I do these two modifications over here, I will be getting this curve. So this curve is the DSF curve. Okay, dispersion shifted single mode fiber. You can see here the zero dispersion point was here but now here the zero dispersion point has shifted to 1.55 around right so you can see if i just do two changes inside my optical fiber i will be getting shift in the wavelength and this is the utmost thing that i require because I not always I am working on a particular wavelength I have to work on different wavelengths as well right so I hope you understood what is DSF now let's understand what is DFF we can do another modification inside the optical fiber as well so how I can do another modification so when I do another modification inside the dispersion characteristics so there would be low spectral window which is observed so the low spectral window is observed in between the 1.3 and 1.6 micrometer so you can see here in between 1.3 and 1.6 you can see we have the low losses. The losses are reduced and this is called DFF. Dispersion flattened. We have flattened the curve inside this 1.3 micrometer to 1.6 micrometer range and this is called dispersion flattened single mode fiber. How I am flattening the curve? So I can flatten the curve by relaxing the spectral requirement and allowing the flexible wavelength division multiplexing right so i will be having the flexible wavelength division multiplexing inside it and i am reducing 
the spectral requirement and this is how I will be getting the DFFs right. So the refractive index profile for the step index DSF is shown like this I have increased the delta so you can see this was my previous n1 this was my previous n1 dash this is my n2 refractive index of the cladding is this and the refractive index of the core is represented by this level for a unmodified uh, optical fiber right so when I modify this optical fiber I will be having increase in the delta and this is my new n1 or the new refractive index of the core so I have to change the refractive index of the core and now I have taken the optimum diameter to be 4.4 micrometer and delta to be 0.012 for that I will be getting the best outcomes for the dispersion shifted single mode fiber so now coming to the refractive index profile for the graded index dispersion shifted fiber this is for the step index fiber and this is how we can change the refractive index for the graded index fiber right what I have to do I have to increase the height I have to increase the refractive index of the core here also I will be increasing the refractive index of the core this is my linear triangular profile right so this is my depressed cladding triangular profile so I will be writing it this is my triangular graded index profile and now this is my depressed cladding depressed cladding triangular profile okay so here also I have increased delta n here I have also increased delta n and this is my parabolic profile right here alpha would be 2 and again I have increased delta n I am working on lambda is equal to 1.56 micrometer losses are reduced as low as 0.24 decibel per kilometer so I will be getting the zero dispersion in between this range that is 0.85 to 0.9 micrometer so I hope you understood the basic concept how I am getting the dispersion shifted single mode fiber what all changes I have to do now coming to the DFF profile DFF profile are very difficult to get practically and in the practical scenario I am unable to work really well with the DFFs right so we can have different type of cladding profiles I have double cladding profile so this is my first cladding this is my second cladding that I have and this is the refractive index of the core so this is how I can see this is a double cladding here I have the triple cladding you can see the different refractive index for the cladding and here I will be having four cladding so this is called the triple clad and this is the quadruple clad so when I have more number of clads light will not be lost in the environment it is going to spread we know with the effect of dispersion light is going to spread that we know but when it is spreading it is not going away from the cladding right it is confined inside the cladding when I have multiple number of cladding so here I can confine the light inside the cladding when I am using the more number of cladding so I will be having the attenuation constant to be as low as 0.19 dB per kilometer at lambda 1.55 micrometer so I hope you understood all of these things in a very great manner if you have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible I hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends give me your feedback thank you so much